So ArcCAD 25 has just been released and it has some incredible features. Today I wanted to showcase how to use ArcCAD 25 and design a project from the very start to the very finish. This video is basically going to be for everybody who's just picking up be it ArchiCAD 25 or ArchiCAD in general for the very first time or anybody that's been using ArchiCAD for a very long period of time. I guarantee you'll learn something new, so let's get started. What's going on guys? My name's David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, firstly, thank you so much for joining me on this channel. Here we talk about all things architecture and technology. A little bit about myself, I am a registered architect here in the state of Western Australia and I work predominantly on ArchiCAD. So I have a very good understanding and a very good working knowledge of ArchiCAD, especially ArchiCAD 24 and 25. On this channel, you will find some great information about architecture, technology and ArchiCAD in general. And down below, there's a number of links, including a Discord chat, where you can join a growing community of individuals and like-minded people from all over the world, be it students, architects, or other industry professionals that have the same interests and share their knowledge with each other. This community is rapidly growing and it is fantastic to see how quickly people are jumping on board, how much information is being shared on that community, and how helpful everybody is. So if you're already a part of that Discord chat, Thank you for being a part of it, thank you for making it what it is, and thank you for making it something so truly meaningful. Anyway, enough of my rambling, let's get started with today's intro into ArchiCAD 25 video by turning around to these screens. Okay, so like always, we're gonna be starting with the ArchiCAD 25 Australian Select Template. That's what's available to me, but feel free to use whatever is available to you. We're gonna be making a relatively simple project. It's gonna be something like a one-story home, um, and we're just gonna go through the very basics of ArchiCAD 25. So ArchiCAD 25 is laid out exactly the same as most other ArchiCADs are. We have our main control panel here on the left hand side. We have all our features up the top which we'll run through later on and we have our layers system here on the right hand side. What we wanna do in ArchiCAD 25 like we always do is start by setting up our layers. Start by clicking Control or Command and the number seven to bring up our story settings. The story settings are critical, especially if you start linking layers. It means you can go in and quickly change, adjust story heights, and your whole project adjusts with you. So if you set up everything correctly at the start, it's very, very simple to change later down the track. So if, for example, you go from timber frame to brick coursing and need to change everything a couple millimeters, well, it's very simple to do it. You can do it in here versus going through and manually adjusting every single wall. So let's start by inserting a story below and I'm gonna call this footings. I'm gonna go minus 172 millimeters because that is the rough size for a good standard slab with an edge thickening. Our floor in itself is gonna be a timber frame. So let's go 2745, which is 27 ceiling level plus the plates. We're not gonna have a first floor, we are gonna have a roof. So what I'm just gonna simply do is delete the first story and leave the roof exposed. Now if we're gonna go for a concealed Celian roof, it's probably gonna need about 600 millimeters or if we're gonna go for something like a concrete roof, we might be able to do it from about 150 to about 250, depending on how far we wanna cantilever. So let's start by about 250 mil for that roof. We're gonna do a concrete roof design and hopefully not cantilever too far that our engineer wants to shoot us. So clicking okay, we've deleted one story, which was that home story, that's okay, we'll just go delete. So over here on the left hand side, like on ArcCAD 24, we have our main control panel. This is your main organizer where every single thing that you create will show up and you will always be able to see it here. If you go into this setting, go show organizer, it's gonna pop up with a main display. So if you do go ahead and create some new sections, some new elevations, using it from the main organizer tool or the view map, you're gonna to struggle to find them until you literally click them and drag them where they need to be. Now we can close that and get out of that and continue moving forward. So you wanna be using the view map more often than not and you wanna be working through these layers. If you do have your own template, this may look completely different, but this is the default ArchiCAD template that is out and available. So let's start by going onto the ground floor, 
things won't change we're already on the ground floor and we're just going to create a very simple design we're not going to go too far complex we're just going to use a little bit of brick a little bit of concrete a little bit of glass we're going to keep the theme very simple maybe throw in a little bit of timber so let's start simply by working on our actual architecture the first thing we want to do is take the wall tool now wall tools it is critical that you understand your layer systems and why that is important so if we take a look at our layer system here it's on a walls external we have a million and one different layers that we can take a look from but we want to stick to walls external for the time being this setting here allows you to change geometry to click multiple times without having to do anything so i can escape that the second one allows you to create a curved wall we can escape that these are the main two that you'll really be using at any point in time you can create curves even with this straight geometry but that's something we'll get into a little bit later the outside face the inside face or the center dictates where the main line is so if i zoom in you'll see the black line there let's change that to the center it changes where you're actually clicking the walls from so i like to start with the outside face because we're drawing the outside of the wall so we always know what the inside is you can change that to however you see fit or whatever your purpose is so i know this video is going very very fast and i'm trying to get as much information here as possible so feel free to pause this video go back re-watch it watch it again until you really get a hang of what i'm trying to explain if I do explain anything too fast, I apologize. Leave a comment down below and I will go through it in more detail. Over here, we have our wall composite panels and we have our structures. So we can adjust our composites to a number of different ways. By default, there is many custom walls already set up in ARCHICAD 25. Now, depending on your template, will depend on what you see here. I will gonna start with a 90 millimeter stud partition. That's gonna be my external wall. You can use any of these, it doesn't really matter. It depends on your project personally. So let's start with a nice timber wall. We're probably gonna create a nice elongated design. We're not really gonna focus on the architecture too much. It will look pretty good at the end of it because anything you do in ARCAD usually does but we're predominantly focusing on how the system works itself. So clicking our very first time allows us to generate our first wall. As you see, it is freely moving. You can do whatever you want. There are these snap grids that are automatically activated on ARCHICAD 25. I personally don't like the snap grids because they cause a lot of more headaches than they do actually help in any way, shape or form. So let's escape out of that quickly, go to view, and simply turn off snap guides here. Okay, now let's click once again to start that wall. You see those snap guides are gone, and all we have to do to get a perfectly level wall is hold the shift button. So I'm gonna draw something like a five meter wall, and I'm not gonna go back and drag slowly. What I'm gonna do is continue to hold shift, press the D command, and then type in 5,000. That's gonna create our very first wall, and then I'm gonna slowly drag it back in, do the same, Shift D 3000, Shift D 3000, Shift D 3000, and let's go Shift D 20,000. And let's just return that back. So Shift D will go 10 meters, run it all the way back, and you'll see it clicks in line with this at 28 meters, go OK, go OK. Now, as you see, we've created our almost box with a small little entry point here. It is a relatively simple and easy structure that we've created. If we click once, highlight it all, we can press Control D to allow us to move anything. That move feature works with one object, all objects, or anything that you just wanna simply move. Now, as you saw there, I clicked once on this wall and it was all grouped because I drew it as a polyline. If I wanted to ungroup this, all I do is click Escape once and then click Alt G. Now, if I click once more, you'll see only one is activated. If I press Alt G again, it'll group all those items back together and activate that group per se so we can actually utilize it. Now, the best thing about ARCAD 25 and ARCAD in general is you can simply go show all in 3D and straight away, we've already drawn something very cool without having to do too much. Now, if you do wanna fly around like that, all I'm doing is holding shift to create the orbit tool and the center of my scroll wheel. By clicking down the scroll wheel, you get the pan function. By holding shift, you get the orbit function. You can scroll in and out to zoom, and that's pretty much all the basics. 
Down here, there's this little man that lets you explore. So if you click, explore, you're gonna get this 3D information that basically tells you how to operate the system. I don't wanna see that again, I know how to use it and then go 3D Explore. Basically, it turns into a first-person shooter video game if you've ever played any of those. S is back, W is forward, A is left, D is right, Base is up, and C is down. Moving the mouse side to side, up and down, moves it like a head. So if you wanted to move forward a little bit faster, holding Shift, you can see we can start flying around our project just like we would in a video game. So this is a very useful way to fly around the project if you're just trying to see into one small specific feature. So if I wanted to take a look at this corner, I could fly into this corner very easily versus trying to actually figure out how to get there by orbiting around and zooming in. Going back to our ground floor plan, what we're gonna do is start manipulating the shape a little bit more, extending it, elaborating it, moving it, and changing it. So let's ungroup everything by clicking Alt-G again, selecting these two walls here. And then I'm gonna click on that corner and go to the chamber or fillet tool. What I wanna do is actually curve that corner in. So let's go two meters and click okay. You'll see we've created a nice beautiful curve right there on the entry. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side, selecting those two walls, fill it, two meters, okay, and there we go. We're now entering into our building exactly as we wanted to. Now I do want to drag this a little bit further in, so let's go another four meters and click these two walls on the side. Now I could individually click on one of these, select the stretch tool, drag it all the way up by holding shift to keep it dead straight and clicking OK, or I could click the control I button, which will automatically group everything. So if I escape that and go Control ZZ or Control ZZ, whatever country you're in, we can undo what we just did. So let's highlight those three walls, click Control I, and it magically joins them all together. It is one of my most used commands. And if you didn't know that one, it's a good one to know. Now, I also wanna do the same thing over here with that two meter chamber. So we're creating a nice curved, elaborated edge on both of these sides. I don't really want this here. I do want it a little bit further over. So let's move that two and a half across by using our shift D and typing it in like we did before. Now what you notice is if we try to connect all of these at once by clicking Control I or Command I, it fails to do it properly. Even if you do it again, it will not actually join those walls correctly. So what we wanna do is only select two walls at once join them, select two walls at once, and join them. If walls are intersecting or the computer can get confused, it's not gonna be able to do the job properly. Now, moving on to the rest of this design, basically that's gonna be a bedroom, that's gonna be a master living spaces, and things like that. We're not worried about proportions, we're not worried about any of that. We're just kinda of worried about how to use the program, how the structure works, and what we're really gonna get out of it. So what you'll see here is if I select all these walls again, go up to my settings dialog box or press Control T to open that up, we can see that our top story is linked to our roof. Now, like I said before, it is at 2745. So if I come back into my 3D window, go Control 7. Let's say we need to change that to three and a half meters for some reason, press OK. Those walls will automatically jump up. Now, I don't want that, so I'll go back into Command 7, 2, 7, 4, 5, click OK, they'll drop back down to the right height. So that is really critical that we set up those story heights and know what we're doing to be able to better the project later on if anything does change. Coming back to the ground floor plan, let's start by introducing some doors, some windows, some different elements and some different textures. So we're gonna come across this palette over here. You see we have a whole bunch of different Options on the left, we have our wall tool, we have our wall end tool, doors, windows, etc. Let's start by going into the door tool, clicking on the door itself, and you'll see we have a number of different doors available in Archicad 25. Now, I have no idea what this design is gonna be, so we're just really gonna play with it a little bit. Let's click on this arched door to start. If you click on the front tool, you'll see that door in an elevation view. If you click this little 3D box, you'll see it in color, exactly what it's gonna come out in the 3D window. So if we wanted to go through and change bits and pieces, we can go through all of our door settings. So the door height is probably a little bit too short for me. Let's make it 2.4, which increases that beautiful arch over there. The width, the width is okay for me, I'm not a problem. The shape of it itself is okay. 
I think the overall door height is fine as well. I don't want a grid on the door. I want it to be a nice solid timber door. Moving through, we know our frame sizes. That's not that important. We know our different styles. If we wanted to add a grid, if we wanted it to be solid, we could change it up here. Continuing through, if we wanted to add a handle, Arcad 25 has added a significant number of new handles, including the panic bars, which are really nice because in commercial design, you need to add them quite often. Now let's select the handle. We'll just go random handle one for now is absolutely fine. You'll see it pop up straight away. And then we can continue going through our settings and changing things how we like them. So if we don't like the colors of this, we can come into the model attributes, change the colors around. So if we don't want it to be wood, let's say we want a nice black frame. We want the frame inside to also be black. We want the leaf outside to be black. We want the leaf inside to be black and we want the leaf glass to stay as it is that bit's fine the handle can stay as black that's not an issue now what you'll see is that the actual arch doorway didn't change so if we continue going through our settings we'll find a secondary model attribute and then also a third model attribute where we can change the settings of that outside so if we go in there change that to black all of a sudden our door frame is now fully black with a glass door so clicking OK, where do we want to put our door? No idea, maybe we start somewhere over here. We'll flip it inside and we'll move on to our window tool. So now the window tool works in a very, very similar way that the door tool does. There is a number of presets available here on Arcad 25 that you can choose from. You can have anything from a fixed to a multi hinge to a triple window to all sorts of different patterns, whatever your heart really desires and you can play with them as much as you like. So if I wanted to introduce something a little bit different, we would start with our fixed window, Arcad 25. Let's drop that right in the middle, not worry about what it looks like, what size it is, go into 3D, go to our little man, fly all the way over here, and you can see that window has come up quite nice. It's way too small. Let's say I wanna make that the whole size of this wall. So by clicking on the edges, selecting the stretch tool, I can run it all the way across, clicking on the edges again, selecting the stretch vertically tool. I can go all the way through and drop it to the bottom. Now, that window frame doesn't match our beautiful arch window, nor is it in line. So I'm gonna drop it to two, four. There's gonna be a little bit of a head on it, but that's okay. We're gonna open up the settings and work our way through, very similar like we did for the door, looking at all sorts of different options. We can have a grid, with editable grid, we can have a divider, whatever really your heart desires, hinges as well. And then finally, we're gonna to get to our model attributes where we can go through and change that all to black like we did, change that to the clear, and now we have matching door frames. Personally, I hate this orange, you guys know I hate that orange. So we're gonna open up those settings again. We're gonna to go to the overrides because it is simply quicker to click override pens and go black rather than going through every single thing individually. Now you can do everything individually if you want different line types and line weights for different elements. But for this purposes of this tutorial, I'm not really too fussed about line weights, pen types or anything like that. So now we have the beginning of our beautiful garden design here that we're working from. If we come back into our floor plan, you'll see our window has massively increased. By holding the Alt button and clicking once, we can get our eyedropper tool. That eyedropper tool basically replicates whatever we have selected. So let's drop that window in over there with the sun facing outwards, selecting where we want it to go, shift control D and dragging it in line with this other window. So what we've effectively created is a glass thoroughfare looking through the house and our arch door there on the side. That is the basic concept of doors and windows. It isn't actually too hard at all to be able to go through Manipulate your doors and windows, change your doors and windows, change your mind. You can have full freedom and creativity here. So for the same reason, we can click that eyedropper tool, simply find the center of that wall, drop it in, and we have another picture frame window here. Let's say I definitely don't want that to be that big. I want it to sit a meter off the ground. So I can go sill height to story zero a meter. I only want that to be a very linear window and we wanna make that about 800 millimeters. So it's this perfectly centered window as a landscape picture frame window. If we wanted to duplicate that in 3D, we could click on that, click Control D, 
click on one of the corners and then click Control or Command again. Holding Shift lets us move it up and down wherever we want and let's just drop it there so we've created two windows. Now, if we don't want that window, simply click on it and tap the delete button. So as you can see, we're starting to get some sort of architectural form happening here and we're getting the doors and windows and elements working together. Now, let's say we wanted to make this window different and not fixed so you could actually get some air into this house. So let's go, okay, Command T, let's start changing up these settings. Going into the basic window settings, and going back to the very start, we can start manipulating it how we see fit. Let's say we wanted to make that a sliding window, for example, we could come over to our window settings and openings. We could change that main setting or the main sash to whatever we really wanted. So let's go sliding, you'll see it creates a sliding window. Sliding mirrored does the exact same thing on the other side. We could change that to a tilt turn, it would be a very large, very heavy, very awkward window, but you have the option, you could have a bottom hung window, you can have a top hung window. Again, the options are basically limited in your imagination. So let's stick to a, not a double sliding, we'll stick to a single sliding window and click OK. So as you can see, now we have one panel that slides, one panel that's fixed, very typical. There are some other cool features here that we can also utilize our sunshades devices. So I quite like the sunshade devices because it allows you to really emphasize the look and architecture of the building. So here we have a decorative, we have a regular, we have a regular reveal, we have a folding to wall face, we have our sliding, and we have our rolling. Now every single thing is different, that's kind of like your roller shutters, it is probably a bit too bulky, a bit too much. I do like the sliding ones in this option. You can have different positions, let's say left to right, both slides to one side, um, left to bottom, bottom to right, you can change it however you see fit. Probably a symmetrical one will look quite nice on this one. You do also have a number of different styles as well as a custom option if you do want to go ahead and change that. But let's say you're looking for like a barn style architecture, you can go something here and change that up completely. Or if you don't like that, you just simply want a regular opening like we had before, it also has that option there. Now if you do want it to cover the windows, in your 3D, you can drop that down to 1500 per se and it will slide halfway over your windows or you can drop it to zero and it will slide all the way over your windows. So let's go 1500, see what that looks like. It is way too big and does not work on our architecture at all because the main rail to cover it is too large. So what we would do in that instance is simply come into this, change that down to two and a half instead of three Take a quick look, still way too big. So let's again drop that down two meters and now we have a window that works well. So if we do wanna open that up two meters, we can see it fully open on the side of our house and have some sort of architectural flair to it. Now let's go once more into those Command T settings and start changing some model attributes. So in this fixtures and fittings, we can go down to model attributes and we can change bits and pieces. I don't like the fact that it's stainless steel for that rail, let's make it black, but let's leave that timber as it is. So there, as you see, you have these nice shutters and something that is a little bit different to the norm. If we came back into our ground floor plan, we could then hold the Alt button to select our eyedropper tool. We could drop three of those windows along this side here. If we did wanna move this window over here, let's say we drag it over here and then we drag it to the center so that's about six meters apart. We'll drop it three meters in between. We'll see that those windows have automatically been replicated. Now that is horrendous from an architectural point of view so I'll quickly click all those three, delete them, come back into our ground floor plan, select our large window over here by zooming in, holding the Alt button, clicking once and dropping it over here. What I do want to do, instead of making it a large window, I want to make it a narrow window. So let's go 750 mil by 24. Coming back into our 3D gives us a large linear window. Now that window is going to be a little bit different from everything else. So let's duplicate that three times. What we're going to do is click on one of these black dots, come over to our multiply tool. Let's spread about 
1500 spacing between them. So if I hold once, you'll see it as I move 1500 centers, it'll create one, two, three windows. So there we go, we have three linear windows over here that are starting to create some architectural form. Now, if I wanted to edit all three of these at once, select them all, click Command T, and it opens up the settings for all three windows. Let's go into our sun and shade tool once again, click our sun shade, and instead of decorative, we're gonna to go to regular, so they're just basically gonna flip inwards, let's go 75 degrees and they start to close, maybe 45 degrees, they're half closed. We're gonna to stick to the same style that we had over there and clicking OK. So as you can see, we've created our shutters over these three main windows, all folding at 45 degrees. Now, if we wanted to change that one over here to maybe 180 degrees and change this one over here to 75, 90 degrees maybe, we can really adjust these however we see fit. You can also adjust them in 3D by selecting the hotspots and dragging them wherever you see best fit. So if we move them around, or we can simply just start typing in 45 again and it will reset that. So once again, clicking that hotspot, dragging in 45, and it's back to where we had it before. Now the beginning of our house is starting to look pretty good. We have the general fundamental basics of the ArcCAD 25 here. What we can do is go back into our ground floor and one of the best and newest features of ArcCAD 25 is right clicking on something, scrolling down and go select in 3D. Now that feature wasn't available in ArcCAD 24 before or any other ArcCAD and you can see it automatically jumped to that specific element in 3D. It works the same exact way in 3D going back to 2D, so right clicking, scrolling down, select on floor plan and there we go, it is automatically jumped to that specific window in the 2D floor plan. I know exactly what I'm looking at. So a quick little interlude here. If you guys are struggling with your architectural drawings and you're looking at a way to make them better, either being at sketch design stage or construction phase stage, there is a link to some digital downloads down below which contain a sketch design and a construction checklist. This is by far the most popular item I have available. Everybody seems to love it and it seems to be the most downloaded product that is actually on my site. So if you do need some assistance and you do want a guide to reference back so that you know your drawings have all the critical information that you need, it's been set up as an international standard and an international guide to help you basically draw better and document better. The link is down there. So check that one out and let's get back to this video. Now instead of going back to the ground floor plan, we're gonna to go to our roof plan. Double clicking will activate our roof plan and right clicking on our ground floor, show us trace reference is gonna give us our ground floor plan underneath so we can see what's actually going on. Like I said to you before, we're gonna be creating a concrete roof. So instead of going to the roof tool generically, so I'm gonna to go to the roof tool over here, I'm gonna click the geometric method over here, and then I'm gonna reduce that to zero degrees. A concrete roof doesn't really have any fall in it, it twists and falls internally and has drainage throughout, but that's a whole nother topic. What we wanna do is then select our construction method, going to the polygonal one over here, clicking once, holding shift, selecting which way we want our roof to fall. In this case, it doesn't matter because it's zero. And then holding shift, dragging across and drawing a box. So now, as you see, we have our roof and it's completely hidden our underneath layer. Normally, there would be a palette over here in my default setup. So what we wanna do is come across to window, come down to palettes, and then open up our roof trace and reference layer. So all I'm gonna do now is drag and drop that perfectly here. So we have our trace reference. If we wanna see underneath properly, we can do our make fills and zones transparent. So now we actually see right through our floor plan and get a better understanding. We can toggle on and off the trace layer here as well by selecting that double square. What I wanna do is extend this roof by selecting offset edge. I'm gonna extend that 1500. And then I'm also gonna extend that 1500. The rear, I'm gonna extend 500. And the side, I'm also gonna extend 500. Now, that bit in itself isn't really too important, but for the time being, we're gonna start by using it. And there we go, we've created our flat concrete roof as the wrong composite. So what we have at the moment 
is a generic wall and shell, but all we're gonna really go to is user defined. We're gonna open up those settings. We're gonna go to custom. Let's say that's about 150 millimeter concrete roof slab. We're gonna change the material itself to concrete structural. And if we wanna change the actual texture of it, we can override all our surfaces and paint that to concrete. So over here, we have a whole bunch of different concrete options. Let's go concrete light 23. Selecting our link layer will change the top material, the side and the underneath. If for example, you didn't want that all concrete, we could open up our settings again by clicking Control T, unlinking it, going to our bottom layer, for example, let's type in timber. Um, what do we get? We have wood, mahogany, let's go wood, pine, horizontal and clicking OK. So it matches these uh, sunshades over here. If we look at it now, we have our main concrete roof with some sort of timber cladding underneath. Now this roof would obviously get thicker, it would change as a composite, let's make that 200 mil and increase the slab thickness, oops, sorry, not 2000, 200, and we would see something along these lines. If we come back to our roof structure, let's say we wanna chop out a big section of this roof to give it just a little bit more depth. We can select one of these nodes, come to the subtract from polygon, and we can draw our own, we can do a shape, or we can do a rotate rectangle. Let's say we just want to draw a basic square right through the middle, maybe, I don't know, somewhere about there. Then we can click on one of these sides, going to our offset edge. This is something I only learned quite recently. If we want to offset that exactly 750 mil, for example, and we didn't want to do the maths of 829 take 750, we can simply go 750 minus, okay. We can do the same thing over here. Let's say we want it to be 750 away. 750 minus gives us minus 33. Then that's exactly 750 millimeters away from that wall. Now, what I wanna do is curve these edges like we did before. Click the node, chamfer, fill it, okay. And let's go back into our 3D to see what we've just done. So now we've created these two architectural pods one swooping out on this left-hand side and the entry dragging it right in. Now, I don't really like this entry. I think it definitely needs some sort of fillet chamfer. So we'll go 17, 750, 750, dragging that in, doing the same two meters over here. Coming back to 3D to see how that looks. And we're just getting a little bit of a different architectural expression coming into this house now. Now, let's say this house needed a little bit Extra, we wanted a blade wall, we wanted something different. We wanted a nice brick feature. So let's click on this wall. Let's go back to our materials and our wall options. We have a whole bunch of different wall options. Depends what kind of look you're really looking for. You probably don't need a 270 cavity brick wall. You would be most likely going with a one course face brick. So potentially we'd be selecting this brick wall here and let's drag a nice blade wall. In this case, instead of going outside, I want centered right through here. Let's drag that five meters wide, clicking OK and going to our 3D. So because I've drawn that on that roof layer, it's only made that 250 millimeters tall instead of the full length like I wanted it to. So what we can do is open up our settings, go to the home story, change that to ground, go to the roof story, change that to roof, and then that would usually be set to zero, but instead I wanted to push past that roof. So let's go another 750 above the roof, and there we have it. Now we have our feature brick wall coming all the way through our concrete design. If we wanted to, for example, to cut that wall exactly around this concrete roof, what we could do is right click on the roof, go connect, solid element operations, which gives us a new palette that allows us to change things as we see fit. So selecting now the wall as our target, selecting the roof as our operator, and then we wanna subtract with potentially an upwards extrusion. If we go execute, we'll see it's cut off everything above the roof. If we click on this square and select the X, it undoes all that. Now, as a different example, we go select as target, select as operator, subtract with downwards extrusion and click OK, it cuts everything under that roof. Now that might be exactly what you're looking for as a blade wall with a pathway through or it might not be what you're looking for at all. 
Now, as you'll see here, we've selected the wrong brick wall because that brick wall has a plaster face. Instead, what we want is actually the cavity brick wall, no plaster. So it's a double brick wall with no actual end. Now, we definitely don't wanna see this cavity here. So what we can do is come back to our ground, go wall end tool, click on that wall, and it will close up that gap. Coming back into 3D, you'll see it'll create not what we want. So we right click to open that up. It'll be a 3D representation of a building material. So all we have to do is just change that to brick structural, clicking OK, and it will fix that right up to how we need it to be. So we can do the exact same thing now by going Alt, spinning around to the other side of our brick wall, clicking once, and it finishes off that wall quite nicely without us having to draw anything further. That is pretty much finished, but I don't like how that looks, so let's just quickly unclick that and jump back into our ground floor plan, dragging this wall, let's say 500 off that. Coming back into our 3D, we can see that blade wall extends just slightly past. So now we've done a number of different features. We've created walls, we've curved walls, we've created windows and doors, we've created a concrete roof, and we've created a blade wall with an enclosed end. What we haven't done is really worked with any timber beams, columns, anything like that. So let's start by creating an architectural feature screen. Let's jump back into our ground floor plan. Let's select our column tool and we'll open up these settings. Let's say we don't want a nice big 300 by 300 column. Instead, we want something like a 70 by 35 or even a 120 by 35 timber blade. We definitely don't want that to stop 200 millimeters short of our roof. We want it to sit directly under our roof. And then if we come into our segment options, we can see we can change it from a generic structural to a timber, timber stud, a uh, timber batten over there. And we can override all those surfaces and make it pine grained vertical linking the two. What I want to do is basically wrap this all the way around over here. So what we're gonna do is select one of these, clicking anywhere basically to start creating that column. Clicking Control D allows us to move it. Selecting the very end node and moving it to our wall, let's space that 150 millimeters away. Coming into our 3D, you'll see we've created our first timber column that sits right at the edge of that roof structure. Now I think personally I'd like to move that back 120 mil so it sits a little bit away. Okay, so now if I wanted to create some sort of easy method to wrap this round and create a vertical screen, what we can do for the sake of argument is simply click on our roof, go offset all edges, click the control button to duplicate that and center it with our column over here. So now we have the secondary roof that we'll delete later on and we wanna space that roughly 150 mil apart on 2.3. So let's say we want 16 copies of this. We can simply click multiply. We're gonna go drag, distribute, 16 copies, go okay. Drag it all the way over here. There's our 16th copy. I'm gonna select that one as well and then go control G to group all of those together. And now to be able to actually understand the fundamentals of this curve, we're just simply gonna create a circle that is the same radius as that arc. So now we can click on the last column, click OK, go multiply, go to our rotate, spread five degrees, rotate a path, which means it will rotate as that path actually travels. We're gonna find the center of our circle, which will automatically snap, so that's about there. Holding shift, clicking once, holding shift, getting our 90 degrees. Once again, control G to group those. I can delete that roof, clicking that one there. I can then once again go multiply, drag, distribute, 16 copies, one, clicking all the way up to about there. And then I can delete the secondary roof we've created. Now, if I go back to our 3D, we'll see a beautiful timber curved feature that wraps around that section of the house. Now, in reality, that timber would have to sit on something, which means we'd have to create some sort of beam. So if we come back to our beam tool, go all the way, zoom in, open up our settings, we can change that to 120 wide by 35. Actually, we need that to be 35 tall and 120 wide because we're going the other way. 
it then sits zero zero on the ground it doesn't link to any story we're going to go segment we're going to change that to timber stud and we're going to open all these settings link them and make them pine grained now actually thinking about it we do want to lift this 35 millimeters off the ground so it is sitting on the ground itself we can then zoom in all the way select the center or the top of that first column go all the way across click once one more click again and then just as we did before in creating that arch it's 1820 we can select that and it's a perfect little loop around so there we go we have our timber beam down the bottom created with a horrible blue pen so i'm going to select all those click ok go to the floor plan segment and override these blue lines to black lines and there we go now we have the bottom cord of our timber feature we will probably also have a top cord instead of bolting every single one individually so we can click Control d click on it once click Control again and drag a copy to the top so now because we can see every single one intersecting if we select one of these columns click Control g we can quickly select three of these groups and i forgot to group this last one this is exactly why we group everything I have to select everything individually, Control G, Alt G to be able to again activate this stretch height tool and drop them all 35 millimeters. And there we have it. Now we have our timber feature wrapping around with different uses of columns, beams, and arches in themselves as well. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and don't forget about the like button next to it. The like button helps this video with the YouTube algorithm. It helps this channel with the YouTube algorithm and it helps it grow. So if you did enjoy the video, I would truly appreciate it if you hit the like button. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Ask me any question you wish. I check as many comments as I possibly can and I reply to almost every single person. So whatever you might be thinking, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. But anyway, like always, I will see you next Monday.